Right, so uh, welcome to our Dev Spotlight session with uh, Daniel. Uh, with me as well is John. Uh, this is a uh, follow up uh, Zambia. Uh, will be a community that helps local developers in Zambia grow, as well as bringing developers uh, together. Uh, we're having a Dev Spotlight session where we'll learn more about uh, our local developers. Uh, for this session, we'll be uh, learning a bit about uh, Daniel. Uh, so um, with me, joining me in um, learning more about Daniel is John. So I'll start with uh, John. Maybe if you can just uh, give a quick introduction to our listeners. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Wilfred, for this great opportunity. I'm John Sonica, uh, currently student of IT at your University of Lusaka, and uh, working also at the same solution. I'm Dave, actually um, currently trying to learn uh, UI UX because I would like to have more interaction with users and bring products that are useful to people. That's a bit of me. All right, sweet, sweet, sweet. And uh, Daniel, if uh, you can just give us a quick introduction. Okay, um, my name is Daniel Ngandu, a software developer by profession. Uh, we currently work in uh, with uh, Broadridge. Um, not a student. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, so uh, thanks again, uh, John and Daniel. So for this spotlight session, we'll just be asking a few questions uh, uh, to Daniel to learn more about him and his experience as a developer. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, so uh, Daniel, uh, could you tell us a bit about yeah. before uh, you got into uh, the tech industry? Okay, so the Daniel in school never thought of doing computer science, okay? So the Daniel back then, of course I was interested in uh, gadgets and changing, you know those back in the day when Nokia was still happening, like I knew all those to my N series, E series and stuff, but it wasn't really something I wanted to do professionally. I always looked at myself as being a doctor, I was in uh, the, the, the quiz team, I was uh, participating in Olympiads. Um, yeah, it was just the normal science stuff. And the only thing I, I got from, the joy that I got from uh, uh, devices was um, downloading games. Uh, I remember the, the first time I saw a 3D game was on an, is it a Nokia Music Express? those ones could like put proper 3D games and that was fascinating, but I never really was interested in anything about games and, and, and developing until I, until I finished my grade 12. And um, I remember there was nothing to do at home and I was playing uh, Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005, Day In, Day Out, you have to, to buy your car out from the, 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 the thing, the pound and stuff like that. And I think that's where I started thinking about, okay, how do these guys really do it? And uh, yeah, I think that's where the interest started. And I think it fully developed when I didn't make it to go to med school. And I had to choose either physics or computer science. and I looked at my strengths, I looked at my performance in class, and I thought, I used to perform well in, in physics or computer science, but physics perceived you people fail. So let me go to computer science because there is no mathematics. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's where now the interest in two tech started with uh, exposure to C. Yeah, uh, Daniel, I, I can see that uh, probably uh, you find yourself being a intake by a hazard. <laughs> 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 interesting, 
<laughs> interesting, interesting enough, and uh, I'm happy that uh, you, you you joined the tech industry rather than being a doctor. <laughs> okay, Daniel. Um, yeah. My question, my question for you today would be uh, the first one would be, what is um, your tech stack like? Okay, how I started. Yes. So I'll continue from where I left. Um, yes. I get to the Copperbelt University, flunk my first year, go into computer science, find this extremely boring programming language called C++. Only looking at the black screen and pressing, using code blocks, terminating a program using is it control C, I, I forgot in control V or something. And, and I'm wondering like, okay, can I make WhatsApp with such thing? Is this how they make it? Or can I view the website from this? Um, it was a tough year. Um, a lot of dozing in class, a lot of uh, failing quizzes. Um, but yeah, so fast forward, second year is done. I need to do attachments as per university requirements. And I got um, an internship with uh, the Copper Belt University, DICT, that's the uh, Department of ICT. And there I had a little brush with CSS, simple HTML, and it wasn't very exciting because uh, I really didn't learn at the pace I wanted to until I think the best internship I had in my experience was when I went to, to Mopani. So my uncle managed to fix me up something and I went there and the guys were passionate. I've never seen people who are passionate like that guy. Those guys were passionate. Um, they, they showed me around ASP.net um, view bags. I didn't even know them. They told me they were explaining jargons like MVC, model view controller. Here you put the business. Here you put the shan. I I wasn't getting it. I was just excited to see a table show and I could type stuff and stuff could be saved. And I figured at that point that if I wanted to become better in this field, I had to interact with people who know things. And I remember there was a, a, a senior of ours in the society, the computer society, Luther. Uh, he worked for Zanako now. He was the PHP guru at that point. Like his whole in intake, they feared you. And I looked at PHP guys, it wasn't nice. It didn't look nice. The whole, you open that, uh, question mark, PHP, yeah, it didn't make sense. So yeah, those were my early brushes in uh, tech. And yeah, the internship basically helped me get set up. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, very, very interesting. Uh, like uh, first years into the tech industry, um, you, you got some good experience uh, starting on. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So cool. Uh, so, Daniel, could you share a little bit about what a typical day like is for you right now as a software developer at uh, Broadreach? Okay, so as you know, if, if you don't know, I'll, I'll explain. So, Broadreach is uh, into health management system. So, there, what we do is building health um, system, management system, and because of that, we are supposed to show an example um, because, I mean, we don't want any of our staff to get sick from COVID, etc. So we have been working, I've been working from home since I joined the company, that's three months. So my typical day is, my work schedule starts from nine hours to, should be till 18, something like that. So at nine hours, I'll turn on my laptop, prepare for my uh, daily scrum meeting at 9.30. The whole team will be there. We'll share our progress reports, what I have been doing, what I'm stuck on, what I plan to do, uh, who I need uh, to, 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 to talk to about a particular input for me to complete a task. And 
by 10 hours, we should have been done. And after that, now you start working on your tasks. And 13 hours, maybe I'll break off, maybe I'll take, I'll sleep, or maybe go bath, or, or maybe finish up a tutorial I'm, I'm watching on something. And when it's 14 hours, I get back to, to, to the work. So I don't know if you would want me to maybe talk about the specific technologies maybe I'm working on or an example of a task or something like that. Um, I think you've, you've answered that one. Uh, there is a follow-up question, I think, more into like uh, the tech side of it, which uh, I'm sure we'll, yeah. we'll get into. Yeah, our next question for you, uh, Daniel, is what is your tech uh, stack like? Okay. Your tech stack, how is it like? So our tech stack, uh, I was very impressed with it because it's very modern. It's basically the future of, of software development, especially when we're talking about web-based applications. So right now, the software we're building is uh, running the latest tech. So we have ReactJS for the front end. We have Kotlin for the back end, which is the API ETC. <laughs> and for the DB, uh, we are using Postgre SQL. This is, I've, I've, I'm watching right now, I'm watching a, a Udemy tutorial. I'm like on section 11 or something on Postgre. And I now I'm, I'm getting why Postgre is, is a better option compared to MySQL, especially the MySQL we know from PHP admin, yeah. So this is the next gen of the software. So before that, the software was in uh, C Sharp, and for the DB, they are using uh, MS SQL. So this was for the legacy system. So I haven't touched, I know a bit of C Sharp. I know a lot of MS SQL because of where I, I worked before, that's uh, CBU. So I know a bit of this, but I'm kind of excited to learn React. React is, is interesting. Too many tutorials. I don't even know what to follow now. And it's messed up, guys. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, that's really uh, interesting, you know. Uh, Today, a lot of uh, tech companies, they are trying to run from uh, C Sharp uh, and all those uh, old uh, languages and use the modern ones. That's, that's really good. And I'm happy. I'm happy for you that you're learning React. So probably in the next, um, <laughs> next one month, I will join you in that part. <laughs> sure, sure. <clears throat> Yeah, the next question for you is, uh, what do you do outside of your coding or outside of work? What, what's Daniel up to when he's not uh, on the laptop? Um, so I'm not a very typical software developer because I have a lot of interest away from my profession, like guys. Um, <laughs> If I could make money from my hobbies, guys, I'll do my hobbies, which is which is definitely not in to take because I'm more, I think I find happiness in doing social activities. Like maybe, for instance, I'm in a, in an old girls group about menstrual health and stuff. So it, it excites me because I'm looking at this other paradigm of life. If I'm not doing that, I'm either at church, uh, um, spending a day at church with friends, participating in church activities. Uh, before I finished my school, I was very engraved into poetry. Um, I used to be like the poetry leader at CBU for our church. And that at least helped me um, kind of, can I say, not get fatigued, with all the work I was getting from, from class, from internship, from uh, being president of the computer society, I think it helped a lot. And I would suggest uh, to most devs to find something away from programming that they can uh, dedicate their time to. I know it's tempting to want to learn the latest stack out there. Oh, I want to do, I want to be a mean stack developer. Oh, 
full stack. I know, I know we need to talk. I'm not happy about people who talk about front end and front end dev and back end, full stack. All these things came because of JavaScript frameworks. Me coming from a PHP background, there's nothing like uh, front end, back end. PHP developers do everything. You just throw in the bootstrap, connect your form to the PHP uh, <laughs> stuff. So yeah, basically you get to do everything. So yeah, I love, aside that, my, my, uh, which I would love to do is have a mini garden. Um, I've been planning to buy some office plants like for my table and stuff. But the issue is that um, sometimes work needs me to go for extended periods of time away from home. So I'm scared that they will just wither and die. So yeah, but yeah, I love I love things to do with nature. Yeah. Well, that's really interesting. You know, uh, a lot of uh, developers today, what they do is just coding, coding. They don't even have a social life. You know? <laughs> <laughs> some, yeah. some even have, have problems in their marriages currently, they, which they can't solve because <laughs> it's always coding, coding. That's, that, that's a good one. And uh, yeah. you have taught me something, you know. <laughs> From today, I will start looking for something else to do. Uh, very and far guys, from go to the gym. Go to the gym, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Developers of the worst physical health ever. You guys can't run. You guys can't do much. <laughs> Definitely, I, I will find a spot. So I will find a spot where I can be releasing my stress. Yeah, sure. All right, cool. Um, so the next question uh, for you, Daniel, is. Um, Tell us if you've ever had, or if you do have any uh, horror stories or developer mm. horror stories um, from the past. If uh, you've ever, for example, dropped a production DB, uh, yeah. Ah, okay. The bug into production and cost the company millions of kwacha. I uh, would like to hear it. <laughs> um, I think the closest I've been if you're not careful, Git can mess you up. Version control can mess you up. And I didn't know how to use it the first time I got to, I, I've, I'd always used it from when I started working at .com, but it was a small team. So you didn't have issues of conflict, etc. When I moved to CBU working on the uh, Tax Online ZDRI project, we were from the CBU side were like 30 developers from ZDRA, they were about uh, maybe 10 to 20. So maybe the, the team was about 50, 50 plus or minus. I'm not, I can't just remember well, but it required, it, there were a lot of changes happening. So you may pull dev development or master. You want to push your changes, maybe the file you're working on or you are assigned to work on, someone also is touching it. So you find that both of you have committed and pushed. And when it's time for merging, you have to resolve a conflict. I didn't know what the conflict was. I just, okay, from the normal lingo, conflict, okay, there's something not way. But I tried resolving it my, on my own. The first time I messed up things, guys. I, I changed people's files. I accepted things, I was not, I don't know, it was messed up. I had to delete branches, like I had to make three branches for the same thing, I had to look for files, I had to manually copy stuff. It was a very, very weird experience I had. Thank God it didn't have uh, too much, <laughs> too much uh, impact though, yeah. People obviously, people complain on a team, oh, what have you done and stuff like that. and. I think the other one that was close to, that was, you know, production things are just weird. You know, you fix something on, on maybe on the test server, it works. It goes into production. And the next thing, I'm being CC, in a mail with like all the bosses and, and my boss, and I'm like, what? Because maybe, because uh, the time I was uh, with CBU, I was working on the, the, the certificates that come out from 
the ZRI system, the tax online system. So maybe you do your VAT, ETC. So there's somewhere, there's certain queries you make, checking for certain conditions, because you don't know all the possible conditions. And uh, I didn't make those, you know, where uh, someone just tells you there's a bug, fix it, you fix that. And then another bug, yeah. So that had to be fixed like ASAP, ASAP, ASAP. Yeah, so yeah, those are a few times that things have been scary, but yeah. Mm -hmm. The next question for you uh, was, or is, what do you think has been your greatest achievements in your tech journey so far? Mm. That one is kind of difficult. Um, I think for me, I haven't achieved it yet. Uh, I don't. I hope you can get me. I hope you can get me. Okay. So for me, the ultimate goal of whatever I'm doing is if I could have an impact on on people. For me, I think I enjoy. Um, doing these kind of meetups where you teach each other uh, new things. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm mentoring some uh, students from uh, Onza in uh, development. Um, so I think I'm getting to that place where I'll be a bit happy or a bit happier. For me, I've never really been a fan of, oh, I've, I know this stack, I know this shan. Uh, I, don't, I don't consider that as an achievement because the web jQuery was famous back then and now it's like no longer a, a part of the big guys. We have now React, Node, we have uh, Next.js. So if you, if you get stuck up with the past, I think it becomes a problem because you really want to grow outside that comfort zone. Yeah. That, 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 that is very uh, well uh, nailed, you know. Most of, most of developers today, we come up with uh, some target to say, no, I want to finish that one day because in React, and, uh, you know, and, uh, funny enough, before, before you finish the course, you just hear that React is no longer <laughs> a good framework. <laughs> This oh. developer got the uh, framework, and then you start thinking about the time you've been losing, yeah. studying, all that. But uh, having some impact in people, uh, I would encourage that one also. That uh, well said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, uh, next question for you, Daniel, is uh, what advice would you give a young developer starting their developer career or developer journey? Most people, that I know that I need to take. Um, either did computer science or they taught themselves, right? The ones who did computer science, most of them, like I shared my story, we just fell in. We didn't plan to be in it, right? And if you're going to be in that category of where you fall into something that you didn't, uh, plan around, it becomes boring. I, I, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. But what helped me was I started getting myself involved in the society that I was in. I became a, a committee member, ETC, and I became active, engaging people from industry, going for trips, organizing those things. And I started falling in love with this thing because I made sure that I would spend a lot of time trying to figure out what it is, how I can easily uh, maybe get to do stuff, ETC. And I discovered that they, their levels in computer science or in, in software development, right? You start with maybe fixing a computer, installing Windows, cracking it, and you're like, okay, this is interesting. Next part now, you want to build a program. So you go through those levels. So that's the first uh, perspective. Um, the other perspective is where you just love it. There are some people who just start loving tech and they're building stuff. They don't even have 
uh, they're not even doing computer science. They don't even plan to do computer science, but they just love tech. And for those, it's a bit easier. So I'll try to speak. Uh, so when you're starting out as a developer, what you want to do is find a community that is active, find people that are willing to teach and people that are passionate. I think the attitude we have towards whatever we learn in life comes from how we were taught at first. If you have programming, probably the person who was teaching you was boring or they didn't have passion. And you want to find a mentor who's passionate. And you want to, it's difficult to know which tool to use, but the rule of thumb that I always use is pick the one that has a good track record. For instance, my first language to learn that got me a job was PHP. And other people start with Java. I admire people who start with Java because it's easy to get into that whole object-oriented arrangement. PHP is not so much object-oriented. It's just now that it's been object-oriented through maybe frameworks like Code, Code Igniter or Laravel. That's when you feel that um, uh, uh, object-oriented arrangement. So try to look for languages that have lasted the test of time, that are popular. Uh, for those who are new to tech, I can give you examples of languages. PHP is one of them. PHP, I think, is 1030 this year or something. There's Java. The difference in years isn't too much between PHP and Java. Then there's, uh, there's uh, you can go C sharp, you can go, uh, Kotlin is new, but it has tremendous support and it's like the next big thing. Um, uh, what else? ASP.NET. So if you can learn these older languages, I forgot Python, I shouldn't have to do it. Python, very important, learn Python. If you're starting out, I would prefer you start with Python, then switch to other languages, yeah. But before uh, we move on to the next question, uh, on the previous one, I have a question also for you. You know, uh, yeah. being at uh, university, we have a lot of courses, uh, you know, there's a lot of pressure assignments and uh, so on and so on. What is your advice to students who are thinking uh, spending time in uh, communities is a waste of time? They will just be focusing on school, hoping that when they graduate, they will learn everything uh, from their place of work. Okay, I think it's, it's, it's a good approach, considering the kind of environment we're in. The, we're still behind in Zambia. We're like over, I think we're like 20 years behind from everyone in terms of tech. Uh, advancement. I don't mean, of course, in terms of innovation, but I mean also the industry itself. In Zambia, you can get a job without a paper as a developer. You can. There are small instances of you being able to get a job, but you need like a paper. I, I know people who are working as food developers, but I mean, the, the, they, 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 they don't know much about software development, right? But because you have a degree in computer science, you have a diploma in computer science, you get the job. And there are people I know who are very good developers, but they lack one thing, the paper. So you have to strike a balance. And I always advise, for me, when I was in school, uh, for a final year project, I didn't want something easy. I said, okay, it's better I pass a very hard project and fail my other courses because these things I can easily learn them, it doesn't change. But if I can grasp the concept of programming, then it will be better for me. And I think it also applies to the advice to people who are starting in development. Always pick something that will challenge you. Don't pick something that's easy, like, oh, I'll make a calculator. I'll make a simple scan. Try to do something that will challenge you, maybe uh, a login, logout system, a user management those things that push you out of the way. And when you're in school, of course, time is, is, is limited, but still try to find something that uh, you find joy in. Of course, maybe someone had already done it, maybe try to twist it a bit, um, maybe use a new framework, ETC. Yeah, 
So, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, I like that. I like that we need to come up with a balance between school and uh, uh, meeting with other guys in the industry. And I, yeah. I, I, have, uh, I'm, I, I have one testimony, you know, if not for the community, I could have not been what I'm today. <laughs> after <laughs> after joining um, Unilas, and I met one of the guys who introduced me to DevC. And every time we had meetups at DevC, you could find the guys are talking about new languages. And when you go home, you are a bitch, uh, you have some challenges. And you yeah. say, oh, no, I have to learn this and to learn this. Thank God we are what we are today. That's yeah, good. Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, our next question for you, Daniel, is um, how, would you, how would you use technology to help your immediate environment? Okay, so thank God I've been on projects that have had a direct impact on community. So mm -hmm. I'll give an example of uh, when I first started working at Dovcom, the project that we were working on, uh, one of them was, um, I remember the, it, it didn't go through, but it was exciting for me because it was the first time that I was trying to apply whatever I had learned to a real life scenario. All that no, database no, normalization. Now I understood why we were normalizing databases, right? Like we have mm -hmm. to split the addresses from the person and connect them via the person ID, split the contact details from the, the, the person's table, like all those things. Are, I was getting to learn them and, and it was exciting. So one of the projects that we were trying to do was making an uh, e-waste system, a system where people can uh, pay for garbage on their phones, the, the drivers have an app where they can see houses that are subscribed and they can pick up stuff following a Google Maps kind of arrangement. It didn't go through, it was pitched to the council. It, yeah, it just died a natural death. The other project that we're now were thrown on after showing that we could co uh, understand and solve issues was Ito. It's still working right now. It's the one that's found by, by the target. Uh, trucks, uh, usually it's for trucks. So the truck companies will pay .com or Probus. So they will top up their accounts and uh, get cards for all their drivers. So there'll be one big account, maybe it has 10,000 kwacha, and there'll be maybe five trucks. And each of those trucks will have a card. So they'll be swiping when they reach the target, they will just uh, tap that thing on an NFC enabled uh, Android device and a receipt to be printed and the transaction will be sent to the server. So during that period of time, I discovered things like making an app have offline capability where you store the, 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 the transaction on an SQLite server, uh, server where that is within the device, the Android device. And when uh, internet connection comes, it does a kind of sync with uh, the data on the server, and that was exciting. So, aside that, the next project that I worked on was uh, called e levy. So, it was uh, from paying market levy electronically. So, we it was the first time I went on site of a project that I was working on. We went to there's a market called Microtilsia Market behind uh, uh, City Market in Osaka. That's why we're doing the the, the demo uh, version so that the government maybe can off, can get it and use it fully. So marketeers, uh, before we we're paying a, a hard cash to for their market stand. So marketeers pay a certain levy every day for using the market stand, it's like rent. So instead of them giving that money to the council workers, we the, the government was wanting a system where the money could go into one big account for accountability and from that money can be uh, distributed among the councils. So we, we were working on that system. I was uh, of course in charge. I was mainly working on the back end, the database and also maybe correcting some uh, queries, data entry issues. Yeah. 
so that was what I was really uh, working on. And it gave me a sense of satisfaction. For the first time in a long time, I, I felt that thing, like I'm doing something for the community. So after that, the next uh, system that I worked on was uh, uh, with, with .com. I think most of my projects I've worked with .com that had like, and, and I think the biggest from all these projects from where I've worked, was the ZRA system. I think that one I could see the results. Like I could see on TV, they are talking about, oh, uh, CBU in conjunction with ZRA are launching the first ever Zambian developed tax system, moving away from the Tata developed system. I was like, okay, this is nice. <laughs> and then when I go to work, I'm <laughs> <It's nice. laughs> like, okay, I'm doing the SQL queries for a report. I have to do this. Like it, it felt nice. Like even if you are just moving images uh, uh, on the front end, like you'd feel empowered. Because guys, how many people get such a chance in life, right? Mm -hmm. So one of the system, the other system that I'm that I've been working on for the couple of months, I've been with uh, Broadbridge, is the smart care system, which is used in hospitals to for, for it, it keeps up. Uh, you can it it helps the CDC people, PEPFA people know uh, how people if people are taking the the ARV drugs etc. So it it it, it makes you feel um, feel valuable in society that whatever you have learned you're giving back to community, uh, improving the the, the 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 quality of life for people. Yeah, I think, yeah. That's really interesting, you know, uh, more especially with uh, the ZRA project, uh, it has impacted uh, the life of many Zambians today and not only Zambians, even uh, foreigners who are in the country and it has even made um, as we got ZRA to be uh, much easier. Uh, those are some of uh, the great stuff you have done. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> great. You're right. Uh, okay, so next question for you, Daniel. Uh, we're approaching the end, so it's just a few more questions. Um, have you done work outside of being a developer? So, like, have you worked as a, just an example, like, for example, me, I worked as an engineer, um, electronics engineer for some time. Uh, also, I worked as um, a translator as well. So, uh, I've had a couple of different hats for uh, being a developer, so have you worked as another like job outside of being a developer? Have I? Um, I think when I was in CBU, the only the first time I got paid pro at least some proper money aside from software development was I was brand ambassador for a certain uh, company called um, Veggie Fresh. So they were they came up with this idea of selling pre-cut, pre-washed vegetables to students. And I was picked as a brand ambassador because obviously maybe because of the the maybe the, the, the influence I had among the CS students, because at that time I was president for the society and at church I was a, a chairperson for the poetry group. So maybe that was the reason. So that's the only time, aside that, uh, to make ends meet at home, to maybe help mom with uh, uh, paying my school fees, my university uh, uh, fees, I had to sell <laughs> ladies' pants, uh, ladies' uh, uh, makeup powder. Like I knew, I even knew where to buy them. I knew the sizes. I knew the shades of powder. Hey, it was crazy, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it because I knew that in life, I've always known that in life, sometimes things don't go your way and you can just start where you want. Sometimes you have to pass through other places to get where you want. And I think that helped me with how to communicate with people because I had to go door to door, talk to people, Tell them no. This is quality. This is quality. And all those things. Oh, this this uh, uh, lipstick. It doesn't it doesn't leave a mess or 
this powder hii mungaone kemunshi imwe hii ni ni shade number 3 hii ni number shan like all those things and yeah it, it helps yeah it um yeah I, i have to agree because um i've done i've tried to sell something like i think anybody who has tried to sell something you know that that's one of like the toughest uh, jobs that that you have to do uh, convincing someone to yeah. buy a product um is mm-hmm. and it's an important skill because you learn how to communicate with people you read you read yeah. the, the body mm-hmm. language you read um like yeah. how to get them to talk to you like straight up with mm-hmm. them like them knowing you so it's a very yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah yes i agree with you uh with fred uh selling is one skill a lot of developers lack one thing i've observed also being in um the tech industry and also um, mingling around with guys who are dealing with startup one thing i realize is most of guys who are in tech yeah. who are really in tech they don't have the skill to sell and sometimes they even come up with very nice products but these yeah. products don't uh, uh they don't sell them properly because they are lacking yeah. the the soft skill let's call it the selling yeah. skill mm-hmm. that's that's yeah. a very nice skill and you know for you to have, to earn money you need to sell yeah. <laughs> that's it yeah. yeah. you know, everyone must learn uh, how to sell for us to sell even ourselves you know <laughs> well, even when you go for interviews you have to sell yeah. yourself sell yourself yeah mm mm-hmm. uh daniel the next question for you is could you share about some of um, the community work you are doing currently it's being okay. with the dev dev community or um uh, the community community in general but more specifically the dev community okay um let me just uh so so the things that I've been I've, I've been very passionate about community work and the first thing that of course my community work began when I decided to participate be uh, pick up the mantle as a computer science president or ICT as a CBU chapter uh, thing that's when it began because then I could have i could have influence and influence people maybe to maybe we say okay guys let's uh, i'm i'm sure most of you guys if you used to follow uh, uh, the cbu computer science uh, society you you'd remember there was a time that we were doing this uh, fixing of pieces for people for mm-hmm. almost nothing yeah it was like a fundraiser event uh, i picked it up from my my predecessors and we decided to scale it because i knew that computer science people are shy people so i said okay let me use my innate ability to connect with people and try to broaden it and we um, i remember that day we had over 100 computers come in it was exhausting because we only had a few people who could fix i couldn't fix but i could help here and there because i had like the cracks for oh i have the windows 10 crack and it is so that is where i first began we tried to write a few proposal proposals to the minister of education proposing that we could have the cs students go there and try to fix their computers and printers things in workout um i think one in one of the posts that i was sharing on linkedin uh the 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 the, the uh, my former boss from the cbu uh, contacted me and told me no would like you guys to fix the printers the whole cbu so they offered us i think that was the 1500 which would help us with our next community outreach and we managed to get them fixed it was exciting it was boring but it was exciting because we were doing something uh, uh, together as a community and for 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 the betterment of something right so after finishing uh, i started working in lusaka and i had this brilliant idea of saying okay guys dreams do come true right we have to inspire the next generation of, of dreamers saying okay dreams do come true you can finish school you can get a job you can you can be what you want so uh, i decided to start a initiative called dreams do come true initiative 
just when I finished school, that's 2018. And I managed to get to convince my friends, my seniors from uh, CBU. I think one of them is uh, part of Fall Loop, uh, uh, organizer Sambwa. So I managed to convince Sambwa, a certain girl called Mary, um, and, and a few other people to try and do this. So we'd go to school and talk to students and encourage them to believe in the beauty of their dreams, to go after their dreams. ETC. And yeah, that that was something that was fulfilling. It at least removed my mind off thinking about, oh, database, start connecting, oh, I have an error on my intention, so it helped me. And uh, I, I also joined uh, during uh, one of these Zikta competitions for innovations. I managed to meet a friend called Annie. And uh, I decided to help out build their online presence for her NGO arrangement. She has uh, an NGO that uh, focuses on women's menstrual health. And the focus is for is in, uh, girls who are in rural areas who can't afford sanitary pads. So yeah, that's what keeps me busy. And aside that, um, I'm, I'm actively offering mentorship to um, my juniors uh, from uh, the CBU Computer Society, and also recently I was uh, asked to help mentor the, the students at uh, UNSA under the CS department. Yeah. Wow, that's that's really interesting. You know, most of the time we get a lot of stuff from the community, and uh, few of us give. Um, back to the community. A lot of people, they will, after getting from the community, they will start just focusing on their work, 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 and making there's money. nothing they are giving back to the community. <laughs> making money, 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 and there's nothing they are giving back to the community. We really need to remember where we are coming from yeah. for you to know what you know today. It's because someone, somewhere in the community, opened his heart to teach you or to uh, talk to you and uh, tell inform you about something and therefore having some activities for young guys yeah. for example mentoring girls of states is very very important wow that's really good yeah. so the last question is uh, do you have any developers out there that inspire you to keep doing better at what you do do you have any okay so i do i do i don't forget people who really made me believe i could do something people that instilled the confidence in in achieving um, uh, my tasks and the first person that i can remember was a man called mr matengere kaira from uh, mopani he's the IT manager there for the software development in, in, in Zambia. Uh, this man, he was very excited when teaching me C sharp. He was like, this is the future. Because you know, Mopani is like a premium uh, partner with Microsoft, so they only use Microsoft stuff. So like, this is the future. He taught me Xamarin. I was impressed. I was like, what? And you know, Zamarin, when Zamarin was coming out, it wasn't uh, flatter then. The only thing that was close to that was like Ionic. And uh, that was the only thing. And he was like, this is the shit. Like you build one code base, it runs on any device, iOS. I was like, what? This is nice. <laughs> and so Mr. Watengele Kaira, I'm still in touch with him. Then I found, when I went to .com, I found very, Two brilliant people. I think they they have taught me a, a kind of humility at work, especially when there are interns around. And one of them is Mr. Mike Miembe. He's currently the IT country manager for professional insurance. He was the time I was at Dotcom. He was the CTO. These guys, uh, together with my my former uh, my, my Mr. Chimu Kamonde, who was under Mike Miembe, he was like the lead developer at Dotcom. These guys never got tired of answering my questions, even those rookie questions. Like, you know those questions you go to ask, and then 
while they are explaining to you, you don't know where you've missed something. You're like, ah, and then you just pretend like, oh, okay, I was like, great. And I'll always ask those questions to a point where I myself say, okay, let me try something. Because I remember Chimuka would always tell me, Daniel, always try, try to break something, try to do something like that. It, it will help you. And I started learning that. And when I joined the CBU Zedare project, I found someone uh, called Muma, Muma Walia, very good developer. Uh, if you ask somebody, she, she knows him. Very good developer, passionate guy. Like he's the only guy I think I would chat new tech with without being judged or uh, being looked weird. Like I'll be there like, ah, oh, Flutter, oh, Flutter is so nice. Oh, talk about the new enhancements. Oh, do you know that Bootstrap has removed jQuery support and stuff like that. Like would click on that level. So like I said earlier, when you're starting out, you have to find mentors that are passionate uh, about what they do, the tools they use, and it to help you as a person grow. And you want to find an environment that allows you to, to break stuff, to push the wrong code on production, and maybe something breaks, they talk to you, you, you try to understand why that wasn't supposed to be the case. You learn stuff, you love, you get to love what you're doing. So, yeah. So that's uh, these are the few people that I can I can speak about right now. Yeah. Sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. All right. Um. Thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Uh. For for taking the time uh, to answer our questions. Uh. Thanks, John. Uh, for uh, tag team in on, on this. Um, I think I've learned, I've learned a lot myself. It has been good to, to set the, the spotlight on you and to, of course, uh, get to know the person uh, that is Daniel. Uh, yeah, so thanks again for taking the time. Uh, I don't know if you have any closing remarks. Um, I'll give you maybe just uh, 30 seconds for closing remarks uh, for John. Okay. Or, and uh, yes, we can wrap it up. Okay, uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, with friends and the entire for loop team. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, this is uh, not uh, a hazard, it's a rare uh, opportunity. Uh, the team has uh, given me to be uh, one of the guys to fire <laughs> Daniel with questions. I'm really humbled for your consideration. Yeah. And uh, I believe together we can do more to give back to the community. As Daniel mentioned, it's, we need to give back to the community. And from today's chat, I know I've learned a lot. <laughs> I've learned a lot and uh, I think uh, I have to apply. <laughs> Thank you very much, Daniel, for your time. Thank you for your time. And we are really humbled to have you. Hopefully to have more chat with you in the future. And also for me, to allow me to make a confession. If today I'm learning you, it's because of you. <laughs> if I remember, well, there was a certain meetup at uh, Bongo Hype where you were busy yeah. talking about, oh, yeah, you guys, you see, view is a PWA, it's PWA, you don't need to reload your page to update. That your, sounds your, like Mulenga. <laughs> <laughs> and then I just said, oh, Okay, I, I, but then I didn't know what to learn. But today, uh, when I was recently, when I was deciding on which other track to go into, you came yeah. in my mind, and then I'm learning few. <laughs> Thank you very much for what you are doing for the community. Sweet, sweet, awesome. So, awesome. Anyway, before we go, maybe I wanted to say if you want to be employed in Zambia. Um, especially maybe in a fine school or something, or internship. I always advise people to learn at least Git, learn basic SQL, and I, I don't know, of course people will, will be against me if I say learn PHP, but you have a high chance of getting a job if you know PHP or Java in Zambia, or C Sharp, these three. So if you can learn the basics of these and maybe build something that works, and I feel like PHP is a bit easier to learn among all the languages. And um, it's a bit easier to enter 
employment with uh, PHP than other languages. So I would advise people to look at Git, look at SQL, look at PHP, and if they can look at Laravel, that would be cool. And the other thing I want to let people know is that if you can learn WordPress, learn it. I know people who earn proper money than me who knows hard stuff and coding stuff in the ID and stuff. Someone just drags and drops and everything works and you can get paid at the end of the day. So learn WordPress, very important. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so yeah, we thanks again, Daniel and uh, John. We're just under a minute, so um, yeah, thanks for joining the chat. Um, so yeah, this is what we had for Spotlight Zam uh, Spotlight with Daniel for follow up. Uh, so we'll see you all in the next one. All right, guys. I'll uh, see you. All right. Bye. Check me out on Twitter, Daniel Ngandu. Check me out on LinkedIn. Check me out on GitHub. And yeah, let's get talking. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right. We'll see you guys. Uh, thanks for taking the time.